This is Aisle 42. Sometimes the most sustainable solution can also be the simplest. And that's certainly true in the snacking aisle now that we can buy nutritious upcycled fruit chips made right where they're growing. In this episode, Sarah Goodman, the founder of Chiwis, shares her journey and passion for creating flavor-packed, crispy, tropical fruit snacks that are good for people and our planet. Sarah shares the challenges of scaling a sustainable business, sourcing upcycled fruit, and finding partners and retailers who align with Chiwis' values. She also opens up about the joys and challenges of being a women-owned business in the food industry and the milestones that Chiwis is striving for and has reached. You're also going to love her wild card answer to the big question right off the top. So let's get to it. Here's Sarah from Chiwis. Sarah, I'm so glad we're having this conversation. I've been enjoying your snacks for a few years now. Like, I, I, don't, I can't even remember how long you've been around, but I feel like I've been eating Chiwis for two, three years. We're in our fourth now. Oh my gosh. See, there yeah. you go. So yeah, it's, it's been a while. You've been in our cupboard and in our lives for a while now. And I can't wait to get into all the yummy details and all the delicious details of what you do, why you do it. But first, I have to ask, if you could imagine the perfect grocery store of the future, what would it look like? You know, it doesn't even have to be the future. We're launching into Whole Foods in the States in October. So there you go. <laughs> That's it. Whole Foods was our first ever retailer in Canada, and they've been the best since the beginning, like especially as a smaller brand. They just are there for you. And I really hope that that is replicated. We're starting in the Pacific Northwest region, but best case scenario, that does really well. And we go into the, all of the states with Whole Foods because that's like where our customer would shop. And what is it about the Whole Foods experience that you feel like is the perfect grocery store? I think that like when you walk in there, the way you feel, like it's just nice. It's a very different feeling than walking into like an independent or no frills or something. Like it's it's daunting walking into a brightly lit place that feels super busy and like unfriendly kind of. They Whole Foods puts a lot of effort into how products look on their shelves and what their stores look like. And you feel like it's a kind of fancy thing. You're like, oh, you're going to Whole Foods. Yeah, whole paycheck. It's expensive. Everything's expensive now. But um, I've had such a positive experience when I started Chewy's when I was in the idea phase thinking about oh I wonder if this pro like kiwi chips could be a thing immediately you're like I just hope one day I can get in Whole Foods somehow we got into Whole Foods first which is I think not quite common yeah so off the bat it was just like oh okay <laughs> we're doing it but uh, they are a real dream retailer I think there's a few others that are in the states like Sprouts that's a really good one as well and you know Erewhon would be great at some point yeah and those are great examples of grocery stores that the aesthetic, you said it's sort of the feel and, and maybe it's the warm tones of the color of the floor or it's the softer lighting or it's the the layout of the shelves or it's the way the produce is displayed or just there's something about all of these things combined that just make you feel like it's a nice place to be. It's a nice place to shop. Like I just want to be in here. I want to be in here and I trust that they've like curated good products. It's almost like when we got into Costco, when you go through the like motions of getting approved, I never knew this, but the amount of certifications and safety and like everything that you do and the, the manufacturing partners you work with, or if you manufacture, the level of certifications and safety checking and even like ethical employment, all of it, it's wild. So we're even going into a Costco now, I'm like, oh my gosh, like all of these products are very good products. Like you're super trusted which was something I didn't know before. So Costco is a great one too. Like we just got into Costco Japan, which is wild. That's really cool to see. That is very cool. I wonder if their aesthetic is different there. Is it as as vacuous and well lit as the ones out here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because I heard that the 7-Eleven stores in Japan are totally different than in North America. And it's like a treat to go there. And they have so many cool products. And maybe it's very different. I did. We signed up for a grant to for export activities called Can Export. And part of that grant is to go to Japan. So hopefully we get it. It'd be really cool to go see that. We jumped right in. Why don't you just take a moment and tell listeners what it is that you guys make? Yeah, that might help. <laughs> so we make upcycled fruit chips. So fruit chips 
using all of the fruit and using ugly fruits. So not like moldy or anything upcycled just means it's a product that wasn't going to go directly to a grocery store. So we make kiwi chips, a tropical kiwi mix, pineapple chips. We're doing an apple chip. That's what we did for Costco Japan, but we're doing it for Canada and the States as well. And then we have a chocolate drizzled orange chip line. And we just use as much of the fruit as possible, all of the fruit, including the skin and corn rind. And we don't add anything other than like our chocolate drizzled orange that has palm oil free, like super high quality, minimal ingredient chocolate. But it's really like no junk added ever. And you can feel super good about eating the whole bag. And when you say chips, you're saying sliced dried fruit, correct? Yeah. I used to make kiwi chips. I used to be a nutritionist before my last career before starting Chiwis and I would make kiwi chips for myself just for hikes and camping and backcountry activities and just like slicing them super thin. I like a crispy snack and there's lots of dried fruit there. I don't really like dried fruit. I don't like that squishy. I always felt like it tastes super bland, but the way that I used to make kiwi chips was skin on everything super thin in the dehydrator until they were crispy, but it's a very, it's such a simple product. Like it is so simple to understand but there's a reason that they don't exist. It's a really hard product to make well, to keep the color and keep the like vibrant taste of it is difficult. And our chips all taste like bright fruit, not like that muted. A lot of the dried fruit out there, like, you know, those Philippine mangoes, they're delicious. So, so good. Like a lot of them have tons of added sugar and preservatives. And I just didn't want to do that. And so our products are really popular with people on the go. They're really light and mess free. And so also like moms love them for their kids and they're great for activities. They're great for couch Netflix time. They're, you know, we just started doing a garnish line for restaurants. And so like even doing some other kinds of fruits and putting them in drinks. And now people are doing that with the rest of our chips too. <laughs> just throw in like, of course, an orange, an orange chip is great. And into an old fashioned, and, I, an old I fashioned. have used it many, many times, yeah. including camping, <laughs> by the way, nothing like making a gorgeous old fashioned when you're in the woods with a, a chiwi's orange slice. So also camping the the chocolate drizzled orange chip using that in a s'more with a marshmallow is very good. Good to know. <laughs> so I will go back now, I guess about three years when I first tried it, your product. I brought home the kiwi chips and opened the bag and my daughter reached in before I could. She pulled one out and her first reaction was, ew, it looks weird. And I just, <laughs> I just, you know, classic dad, I'm like, just put it in your mouth, like stop talking and just eat it. And with one bite, she's like, this is delicious. And she grabs oh, five, you know, a handful cute. more and runs away. And I think when it comes to sustainability, one of the things that is on my radar often is the processing that goes into food products. And in your case, given that so much of the fruit, including the exterior, is included in the sliced fruit, it reminds us that sometimes we don't need to process things the way that we typically do. And we don't need to manufacture things the way that we so often are, are accustomed to. So when you've kind of, I'm sure you've gone through so much product testing and so many alternatives and iterations of what this fruit could be or what people want, what people want more of. I mean, you're running a business, right? You want to make things that people love. What's been the customer reaction to there being things like, you know, some of the exterior bits of this fruit that's right in on the chip? I think with the kiwi chip, People weren't super fussed about it. Like they got it and it's such thin skin that it wasn't a big deal. In the States, we have noticed with the orange chip because it has the rind on it, which is like really full of antioxidants and nutrients and fiber. Some like American customers are like, I don't know if I want to eat this. But then they try it like, oh, this actually it doesn't taste bad. But that's one that we've kind of seen. Throw some chocolate on there and they don't care. <laughs> but, you know, we've tested a lot of different things. I was talking to my marketing director the other day. I'm like, we need to do a social media post about all of the funny ideas we've had that never came to fruition. <laughs> like we did a chili pineapple chip, a chili mango chip. We thought it would be so cool. We have really fun packaging and stuff. But, you know, you try different things and not everything makes it. But I think like upcycling and upcycled when I started this wasn't as trendy as it is now. So people are more in the know about that and they get it. I still get asked about it once in a while, but it's definitely something, especially when you're in like around food, people and buyers, they are looking kind of for that now. Something sustainable. Yeah. And unfit fruit for the produce section 
it's nothing new that that's been used for food products, but it's usually, you know, smashed into beverage, it's smashed into yeah. uh, jams, it's made into a bunch of other things. But the idea of like, hey, this still has like in its current form, still some usefulness and it's still delicious. The fact that you've taken that upcycling effort and made it snackable with very minimal processing, I think is a beautiful thing. Thanks. Talk to us about being a woman owned business. What's that like in this current market? We always hear about the big, bad grocery stores and the, it being a dog-eat-dog dog world. And, and I know you have a few stakeholders and your, sort of your, your business ecosystem is, uh, you've got a nice group of people in support, including your team. But what's it like owning and running a women-owned business in the food space? I think it's good. Like I think that we've had in the past, I forget which retailer it was because it's so rude of me. I think it might have been Sobeys that had a women-owned area. And I think that you can take advantage of this. Like, I think the women-owned stamp on the back of our bag helps, like, our tar target customer. There's lots of different ones, but the main one is a woman. There are grants out there for women. Other than, you know, there's stats about funding and things like that. But I think you can use it to your advantage. Like, we have over 60% female investors in Chewies, which is amazing. But, like, it's great. But then again, I don't know. I've always been an entrepreneur and I've always, I guess, had women-led businesses. So it's just normal. I don't know what it's like to not have it. <laughs> very fair. That's very fair. <laughs> Where are you currently selling all of your products? I mean, I, I see you guys all over here in the Lower Mainland, in the Vancouver area. So this is your backyard. You're just up the highway on Squamish on the coast. Where are people coming across your product across the country or, or beyond? Uh, we are across Canada. We're national in Whole Foods. We have, we're in 7-Eleven. We're in HomeSense and like Winners. Marshalls across Canada. Lots of like smaller independent stores in Ontario. We're going to a big trade show in September called CHFA to get a bigger stronghold there. But to be honest, for us being in British Columbia, it is so much easier to send product to California then send it across the country. So it hasn't been a huge, huge push to blanket Ontario, not even tried in Quebec. And yeah, we're Canadian. Um, and I, that might not sit well with people, but like freight is crazy. It is so expensive. And our focus has been the West Coast of the States starting and we launched in like April or May into some stores. We launched into Bristol Farms and Lazy Acres. New Leaf, and now we're in over a hundred stores in the West Coast of the states, and we're launching into sixty-five Whole food stores in October. And I think that that's kind of where we're going to see the most success. Same kind of values as people here more, but we'll see. Who knows? It maybe when we're at this show in Toronto, it would make sense to set up a warehouse or something, and then have one in Ontario if, if things go really well. But a lot of the bigger stores there, like a Loblaws want to charge us like $30,000 per flavor to get on their shelves. So I'm not doing that. I get that. Makes a total sense, especially given, oh, you have a sidekick behind you there. That's Linda. Oh, Linda. <laughs> what kind of puppy dog is that? Hey, Linda. She's a Texas mutt. <laughs> <laughs> Looks awesome. <laughs> She's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So when it comes to your consumers where are they finding you in the grocery store they're finding you next to doritos are they finding you next to you know mixed nuts where in the grocery store do they track you down we are in a few different like it's funny we got into save on a couple of years ago and they they found us on tiktok and they wanted to put us in i was just stoked on that and they put us in produce which is not as successful as other stores like Whole foods where we're in like the healthy snacking area that's where we usually are listed around like hippie snacks and there's some other like dried fruit cracker, like the stand up pouch kind of format. There's a lot of healthy snacks and that kind of format. And that's where you would usually find us. But some stores, they're like, oh, it's fruit. I'll put it by fruit. And it is often hidden. But yeah, healthy snacking is where we try to tell the buyers of the stores where to put us, where they'll be the most successful. Because like if you put us somewhere that's hidden, we're all going to lose. Yeah, that's for sure. I can't help but feel like. Chiwis would be a great fit for an airline, just given that it's so packable and so light. I don't know if they are, are there restrictions around fruit moving around the world. I don't know, but I can't help but feel like it'd be a good fit. Not really dried fruit, to be honest. We've done a bunch of export, but, and we've thought about the airline thing. 
one thing I, I've always thought, like, why are there no smart suites on airlines? Like that, would, I would buy them all the time. But when you do sell to an airline, it's almost like a marketing activity. It is, you do not make any money at all. And it's a lot, it's a big project. It's a lot of manpower. And it's always just like, we don't have time for that. We have to focus on things that will actually give us a return. But there's a company, I think the other Canadian called Twigs, and they're on, they're a pretzel company. Actually, people always say our bags look very similar, but they're on Air Canada. They are, yeah. They're on Air Canada and Three Farmers Snacks are on um, a couple other regional airlines. So it's nice to see Canadian snack companies uh, getting into the air, into the airways, which is great. Let's go back to your supply chain for a moment. Here you are on the west coast of Canada. You are not growing kiwis and pineapples in your backyard. Mm-hmm. What's it like to find this fruit and to get it to where you need to get it to get it produced? So when I first started, I really wanted to use upcycled fruit. But when when I started, I was working out of like 100 square feet out of a another BC or a Squamish company, Squamish Water Kefir. They rented me like a corner of their, their space. And so I was getting kiwis from a fruit wholesaler in Vancouver. But when Whole Foods was the first customer, I realized, okay, this is a terrible business idea. I need, well, I want to grow something to scale it. I cannot be making these things myself. And then I found co-manufacturing partners that are by the farms where all this fruit is because about 10% of the fruit grown is not suitable for grocery stores. And so we get that. And it's really important to have manufacturers by the suppliers because again, freight. Also, if you want the fruit at the optimal time where like the nutrients are at optimal levels, the ripeness is at optimal level. And when you're moving stuff all over the world, like that's not ideal. So it's really tough to find co-manufacturing partners. I'm sure with like every kind of food business because they're not out there marketing themselves and so you have to do a ton of work and find the right people who share your values and can make your product and there's R&D and all this stuff but we've been really lucky to find some amazing manufacturing partners that uh, can make the product better than I could and using upcycled fruits and can scale so that we can work with companies like or retailers like Costco and have the certifications to work with retailers like a Costco because just to get those would probably be like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's not something we're doing. <laughs> no, nope, totally get that. And I know that Chiwis is up for some awards coming up later this year. Why don't you share a little bit about some of the accolades you've had and that are kind of upcoming, all going well? We're up for the Sustainability Award at the Rise Awards, which used to be the BC Food and Beverage Awards, which is cool. Uh, it's our third year being nominated for, actually, the past two years, I think we were nominated for two awards. We've lost all of them. <laughs> so maybe this is the year, year three. So we're up for that one. And then we just found out that we're a finalist for the CHFA Launchpad Award for an innovative, most innovative product, which is for our dark chocolate drizzled orange chips, which is awesome. And that's the one in, that's in Toronto. And so just even being able to pitch in front of all these buyers and they, they learn more about the product may really move the needle down there and then we were a runner-up I guess second place winner at a UNFI show in June in Toronto which was great but uh, I don't know no. I think that's it <laughs> yeah well it's it's great to see you getting the uh, the support that you've uh, worked so hard for and I know that your team works so hard I see you at the shows at the industry shows seeing your product on shelf and all the places I see you guys on on clip strips and on high shelves and low shelves and big feature displays. Uh, You're next to the checkouts. You're, I kind of feel like it's really, it's really clicking. And so it's so exciting to see that taking shape for you. And yes, I am hopeful for your sustainability award through the BC Food and Beverage Rise Awards. Uh, We are the sponsor of that one, Uh, Ethical Food Group. So we're excited to sort of see you in the mix there. It's a wonderful community that you're involved in, that you've been involved in for so long. So excited for for that coming up for you. I can't believe it's been so long. It really doesn't feel like it. Like into our fourth year is is wild. It's just time's going by so fast. (laughs) That is true. We blink, right? We blink. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you. If you were to have a celebrity endorsement, unplanned, unprompted, someone out in the great A-list celebrity sphere just started pumping the tires of Chiwis, who would it be? There's a few. One person who I like who actually helped me get through the first bit of chibis when I was slicing kiwis by hand on a mandolin and I was working like 14 hour days in this tiny corner of the space. I listened to Mark Marin's podcast 
WTF constantly. Like he got me through that time. And I actually reached out to their, his reps. So I know he's filming in Vancouver right now. So I just wanted to give him some product and say, thank you for making me not lose my mind. That's more of just like, I think he's so funny and I love his comedy so much and his podcast. I also really love Chelsea Handler. I think she, if I could get some product in her hands, which I also tried to do because she goes to Whistler all the time. And so a friend of mine knows someone who is a, her masseuse. So I was like, get, give them to her. Never happened. Supposedly people try to give her stuff all the time. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. But you're allowed to say it out loud on a podcast. There's nothing wrong with that. For sure. Yeah. I think she's funny. I would probably like them. That's good. You get bonus points for not saying Ryan Reynolds or uh, Blake Lively, by the way. Well, I think that she's in a bit of hot water at the moment, but uh, <laughs> I like his movies. He's not a, uh, not my hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> that I get, that I get. But as a business person, he's obviously very good at that. I bet, hey, Ryan, if you're listening, she always will be up for sale in two years. <laughs> nudge, nudge, <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. That's awesome. Sarah, thanks for the time. Thanks for everything that you guys do and that you make. It's a beautiful product and I'm oh, proud to serve you. it to my family. Oh, that's the best. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of Aisle 42. I hope you grab a bag or two of Chiwis the next time you're in the grocery store. To learn more about this podcast and the work that my team and I do in the food industry, go to ethicalfoodgroup.com. Okay, that's it for me. I'm Corwin Hebert and I'll see you in the future.